Hi guys, back in the garage. Wanted to take a minute and talk about the old manual tubing bender that I have and some of the upgrades I did. This is an old Chuck Smith on the glare there. Chuck Smith's motorsport tools. I don't know if he's still around or not, but uh, they're all basically the same. I think they all work pretty much similar, but um, this was cheap, quote unquote, at the time. It was a manual with the ratchet deal, and I ended up putting a cylinder on it, and I bought the cylinder secondhand at a surplus place, and it came with the pump and everything, and there was a whole debacle about this mounting plate here was made by somebody that didn't know what they were doing, and they had actually marked it wrong. So when I went to plumb it, I had plumbed it wrong. But eventually I figured that out, and it is now working perfect. And to adapt the cylinder, in my case, this particular cylinder had a flange. So I just came up with these guys that I bolted in. Um, I had plenty of stroke on the cylinder, so it wasn't like I had it sheeted in. You know what I mean? I just did this because it was the easiest way. And I also adapted... Uh, this thick stuff here to put the uh, actual rod end on. But uh, the point of the video isn't so much to talk about the bender as it is to talk about some of the dies. And of course, when I bought the bender, you know, it came with a, uh, well, it didn't come with it. I had ordered several dies. But as time goes on, you'll find out there's another die you need um, here and or there. And frankly, uh, I was just too cheap to buy them. So I ended up making them. So the last one I did was this guy which if you'll notice is kind of weird. And that's actually for doing square tubing. And that little extra divot there kind of gathers up that extra material you'll have on the inside of a square when you go to bend that. And uh, that works out great. It does leave a little kink on the inside of the tubing. That was fine by me. Um, the next thing I did was I needed a couple of additional smaller dies. And I knew somewhere in my stash I had this uh, radius cutter, but um, as I found out, this particular one is great for doing, you know, OD kind of turning, but it doesn't work so good to do the small groove on the ID. So I had to come up with something, and what I came up with was this guy, which is very simple, very low end, low tech, but it's just this block of steel. I bored a hole in it. I made this shaft with a square on it. And you just turn that manually, and the cutter there. It's just there's a screw there to, to lock the cutter down, but it's all manual. You bump it how you need it to size, and then you just slowly make your cuts and dial it in on the lathe. Uh, pretty simple. Um, you don't have to have the expensive stuff to get the job done. Um, as a matter of fact, if you look at these two dies, you might be wondering why one is much bigger than the other, and that's simply because I took this guy and I cut it out of there. And once I had cut that out, I put this on a rotary table on the bridge port to open it up to inch and an eighth because the first one I made was, was only an inch. But uh, And then you can see the, the wiper blocks. Um, I just fabricated those out of multiple pieces because that's, that's the scrap I had. So the point of the video is, guys, um, the factory dies, quote-unquote, are nice. But if you are like me and you kind of don't mind a little bit of a challenge you can very easily make your own. I'll talk to you again, guys. Bye.